between my faith God, mindful nutrition friends. Hey, I want to welcome those who are returning back here with us and also to give a warm welcome for any of you that are new. I appreciate you coming and learning more about ways that can help you to have the greatest health that you can through the nutrition that you that you provide for your bodies. And we know that our bodies are temples, that they are a gift from God to us, and that the things that we put into our bodies really do make a difference in how we feel, in how we think, and just our overall well-being, right? So today we are focusing on fat. The truth about fat, is it good for you or not? Well, if you lived back in the 80s, like I did, um, fat was taboo. You, you didn't eat fat, right? Because the saying was the fat you eat, the fat you wear. And there was a lot of cynical statements that were made um, about fat and what ended up happening was that they would take the fat out of the products and they replaced it with sugar because fat contributes to the taste, the feel of the food in your mouth, and it also contributes to the flavor. So when they took that out, pretty soon the food didn't taste all that great. So what they did was they added extra sugar in order to compensate for that. Well, there's a lot of things that happened during that time because of that, that I think has played an impact on some of the issues that we find today. And one of those is a fat phobia. And I know that there are a lot of people who have an issue with this. I know that I did for a really, really long time. And it took a lot of prayer, <laughs> asking the Lord to help me to not be afraid, because I started doing my due diligence. I started researching it. I started finding out ways to help with anxiety and with depression, um, to have healthier hair and skin. All, all of those things, those issues that I seem to be having a problem with. And so it's important to be well educated and know what it is that your body actually needs in order for you to be the best at the best health that you can be. Okay. So did you know that your brain, we've talked a lot about the way that we think that our how we feel that what we eat contributes to not only what we're thinking but also how we're feeling well your brain this wonderful organ in your head if you if you squeeze out all of the water because your brain is made up of water and fat and if you squeeze out all of the water from your brain you would be left with 60 percent fat in your brain. So now what do you think happens when you exclude all fat from your diet? Now I'm not talking about the bad fats, right? The ones that cause disease, um, your saturated fats, okay? Um, those are the ones that are found in your processed foods, they're found in your fast foods, any of your deep frying, um, it changes the consistency of the fat and makes it so that it is not healthy for your body or for your mind because it has been contributed to Alzheimer's. It's contributed to schizophrenia. There, there are all kinds of medical issues that arise by consuming these um, these saturated fats. Okay. So you know by now that I am an advocate for whole foods, giving yourself the highest nutritionally dense foods to help you to allow your body to function the best that it can. 
And so today we are going to talk about the importance of fats in your diet. Now, if you have had a fat phobia, I'm hoping that this will help you to be able to relieve some of those things, uh, some of those stresses and fears that you might have towards this. And it doesn't mean that you can just go out and now it's like, oh, Tamara's given me free reign on fats and I'm just going to eat whatever I want. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'll show you some ways that you can include these healthy fats in your diet to help you with these mood, having a more stable mood and also helping with depression and anxiety. I know that, oh my goodness, my friends, I hear about this all the time and I see it in people and I see it in myself. But I want to tell you that including these healthy fats in my diet has helped. It's helped to stabilize my mood more. It's helped with my skin, with my hair. It's helped with um, my overall feeling of well-being and being able to concentrate more. So you have essential vitamins and minerals that travel through the body and cling onto the fat. They're fat-soluble vitamins. Okay, but if you don't have those there, then your body isn't able to absorb what it needs. Your mind isn't able to have what it needs in order for it to function properly. And so we have such an imbalance in our society today in the food that we eat because we do eat a, a tremendous amount of these saturated fats that are found in the standard American diet. So how do you include the fats that you actually need that will help you with your health? Well, we're talking about your omega-3s and your omega-6 fats. The fats that you eat, these healthy fats, not only are they good for your brain, but they are also what the body uses to create the myelin sheath that goes around your nerves. And so when you don't have a lot of that, you can experience some nerve pain. And um, there are situations where people have nerve pain and it isn't necessarily neuropathy and they don't know what's happening. These essential fats help your body to be able to create the systems and the like the mylar sheath around your, your nerves that, that help you, okay? So your, your omega-3s, those are going to be found in your seeds and your nuts. So we're talking about hemp seed. Now I'm not promoting any product here, okay? I just wanted to give you an idea. I was able to get this, um, this container over at Walmart. And so it's easy to find. Um, you can also find it in your bulk food stores. Um, I know Costco carries that. Those are just the stores that are around me, but you can find them there. You can also use your flaxseed and you can see I use this a lot. Um, flaxseed is a, is a wonderful source of omega-3s. And it can be used as an egg replacement for those of you who do not eat animal products. One tablespoon of flaxseed to two tablespoons of water. And you can replace that for any egg in, in a recipe. Okay, It gives you that nice smooth feeling in your mouth with your baked food and your baked goods. Okay, So that's another one. Um, your pumpkin seeds your uh, sunflower seeds, also sesame seeds. These are all really, really good sources of omega-3s. Now, this is what I do, and it's just an idea for you. I've taken a container and I put a, a pretty much an equal ratio, a little bit more on the pumpkin seeds and the sesame seeds because they are bigger. But I make a combination of my flax seed, the hemp seed, um, sesame seeds, your pumpkin seed, and your sunflower seeds. 
and I just combine this into a container. And then in the mornings when I have my hot cereal, I will just take a tablespoon, a tablespoon of this seed mixture and sprinkle it over the top of my hot cereal. I can sprinkle it over the top of my, my yogurt and make a soy yogurt that's delicious. And I'll sprinkle that over that or over my fruit. However you want to add that, um, you could add it to avocado toast and sprinkle it over that. You can even sprinkle it on top of your salads if you want. Um, one tablespoon of this mixture will give you all of the omega-3s that you need for a day. So very, very simple way for you to be able to incorporate that into your daily uh, allotment, okay? So that's one way that you can do that. Um, chia seeds are another great way to, to use um, seeds as, a, as an implement for nutrition in you. Um, your chia puddings you can use. You can use chia seeds to make jam. So you're also not only including your fruit, but you also get the nutrients from those, uh, from those chia seeds. Okay, so that's, that's a great way that you can use those. Um, your omega-6s, that is going to be found in your sunflower seeds, your sesame seeds, hemp seed, and pumpkin seeds. So that combination, that seed combination that I showed you, you're getting your omegas and you're getting your omega-6s. Great blend. Now, if you are looking for a great fat source as far as uh, meat eating, then your fish, your fatty fishes are going to be the way to go. Salmon, mackerel, herring, um, sardines, anchovies, fresh tuna, um, and your eggs. Uh, I will show you. Now, I picked these eggs up at Costco. Um, I think Sam's probably has them as well. Any of your box store there. Um, so I'm not promoting the brand, but I did want to show you some important things on this. So you will notice that this brand of eggs has a high omega-3 property in it. The reason for that is that they are feeding these eggs, these chickens, a vegetarian feed. It contains the flax seed, so it's going to be higher in your omega-3s, and that's what you want when you are looking at using an egg for your omega-3 fats. This is what you're going to want. No hormones, no antibiotics. We don't need to be adding extra stuff into our food, right? And it's an excellent source of vitamin D and E. So make sure that they're cage-free. I'm not necessarily saying that you need to have organic, um, even though I think that that is a really good idea when you're talking about eggs. But if you look for those, those things, then you're getting a really good source of omega-3s and protein um, into your diet. Having those a couple of times a week is not going to hurt you and it will help to give you that healthy source of, of fats, okay? Um, I know that eggs are super expensive right now and so I wanted to give you some ideas on some other things that you can do to incorporate those healthy fats into your diet, okay? With the nuts and the seeds, walnuts are very, very high in omega-3s, fats, fatty acids. So that's a good source for you. Now, it doesn't mean that you sit down and eat a whole package of walnuts. You can take just an ounce, an ounce of those um, nuts is plenty for your, for your source of healthy fats, okay? The more whole foods that you can eat, um, your um, whole grains have got healthy fats in them, as well as things like your um, olives and olive oil. Now, I'm not a big fan of pouring a whole bunch of olive oil over your salads or in your food, um, but it, the better way to do that is to eat a couple of olives. 
Um, another source for those who do not eat meat would be um, your marine algae. So that would be your, um, I get this, the aqua veggies and the dolls. And the, it just comes in little flakes. Um, and I put these in my green smoothie, mostly because they are really high in iodine. And I don't know if you can see this. See, it just comes in little flakes. I don't use a lot of them, but it does give a really good source of iodine if you've got any thyroid problems. You're going to want to include something. If you're not using iodine salt, you're going to want to include some dolls in, in your recipes. Okay? It doesn't take a lot, but it is very, very helpful for good thyroid help. Okay? All right, my friends. It is not difficult for you to be able to get an adequate amount in a small little package of the of the proper amounts of fat for your diet for your brain health for your skin i love to use coconut oil um, as a moisturizer when you get out of the shower you can rub coconut oil on your skin it's wonderfully moisturizing for your skin um, I use a primrose oil on my face as a moisturizer. That is really nice as well and smells wonderful. So there's all kinds of ways that you can use um, these healthy fats to contribute. The thing that helped me the most with this, my friends, is recognizing that these things, these are all things that the Lord has made. All of the nuts, the avocados, the seeds, even the eggs are given to us from a loving God who our health is important to him. And when I started to recognize that, it helped to wipe away a lot of that fear that I had around fat. I took it slow and I don't eat a lot, but I do use it. Uh, another thing that you can do that's kind of fun is I make my own nut butters. A lot of the peanut butters today, unless you're buying a natural brand like Adam's peanut butter, has got added palm oil in it and a lot of sugar and salt and um, these butters this is a mixed nut butter and so i just bought a bunch of uh, roasted mixed nuts without salt and without oil and blended it up in my fruit processor it only takes about five minutes for it to turn into nut butter and it is delicious, my friends. And you can take, like, seriously, like, take a teaspoon and drizzle some of that over the top of your oatmeal. It's delicious. Put your, you can do the same thing with peanuts. Get roasted peanuts without salt and oil. And you can buy them in bulk. So it's a lot less expensive. And you will spend less money on your peanut butter and your nut butters, you can do this with almonds as well, then you will buy it at the store without all of the added stuff. I put my nuts in, I put a little bit of sea salt or Himalayan salt in with it, and we really enjoy this. Put it on some, you know, the ants on the logs that maybe your mom made for you when you were a kid. That celery and peanut butter and some raisins on the top. It's still a wonderful snack and um, tremendously healthy for you. So don't be afraid of the things that the Lord has made to bless and benefit you. All right, my friends, I'm going to say goodbye today. 
I hope you have a wonderful day. And um, until next time, remember, quiet the mind, nourish the body, and enliven the soul.